This OSCE video will guide you through what you should be looking for on a respiratory examination in an OSCE scenario, followed by a run through of what it should look like. Candidate instructions. Please examine this patient's respiratory system and present your findings in six minutes. On introduction, introduce yourself and role, wash your hands, check the patient ID, explain what you're going to do, and get a chaperone. Look for bedside clues such as oxygen, nebulizers, any medications, or sputum pots. Look at the patient to see if he's conscious, short of breath, hoarse voice, any wheeze or stridor, pursed lip breathing, or accessory muscle use. Look at his appearance and see if he's in any pain. Ask about pain. On the hands, you should assess for the temperature, the colour, capillary refill, any clubbing, anemia, dilated veins, tar staining or a visible CO2 retention flap. In the arm, you should assess the pulse and the respiratory rate, and also the blood pressure in both arms. At the neck, you should assess and measure the jugular venous pressure, and assess the carotid pulse for character and volume. In the face, you should look at the general appearance, look at the eyes for any jaundice, anemia, corneal arcus, or evidence of fauna's, look in the mouth for any central cyanosis, any dehydration, any angular colitis, and the state of dentition, and also assess the breath odour. On general inspection of the chest, you should look for any scars, asymmetry, any chest wall abnormalities, intercostal recession, or accessory muscle use. On chest palpation, feel for the position of the trachea, the position and nature of the apex beak, assess chest expansion, and tactile fremitus. Percuss the chest, listening for any dullness, stony dullness or hyperresonance, comparing both sides. On auscultation of the chest, listen for breath sounds, assess the vocal resonance and whispering patriloquy, comparing both sides. Repeat these examinations on the back, performing general inspection, chest expansion, tactile fremitus, auscultation, vocal fremitus and whispering patriloquy, comparing both sides. Assess the lymph nodes in the neck, including submental, submandibular, preauricular, deep cervical, supraclavicular, posterior cervical, post-auricular and occipital. When examining, you must also assess for sacral edema and ankle edema. To complete your examination, thank the patient, summarise your findings and if necessary, order a chest x-ray, a sputum analysis and perform an arterial blood gas and peak flow. Hi, my name's Adam, I'm a third year medical student. Can I just check your name and date of birth? I'm John Smith and I was born on the 3rd of the 11th, 87.
Okay, so I've just been asked to do an examination of your respiratory system. What that's going to involve is having a look and a feel of your hands and your face. Ask you to expose your chest and have a quick feel on the list. Is that okay? That's fine. I will get a chaperone at this point. I'm going to start with general inspection, looking around the bed for any bedside clues, such as any oxygen, nebulizers, inhalers, or any sputum pulse, which there's none. Looking at the patient, checking his consciousness level, checking if he's breathing normally, if there's any obvious hoarseness or stridor or wheeze to his voice, and if he's talking in full sentences, which he is. Looking at his face for any evidence of pallor, any personal breathing or any accessory muscle use, none of which are present. So I'm going to start. Are you in any pain? No. Okay, so I'm going to have a look at your hands, feeling for the temperature, checking they're not cold or clammy, and looking to see if they're well perfused, which they are. Checking at the nails for capillary refill, pressing for five seconds, and the blood should return within two, which it does. Also checking for clubbing, so can you pop your fingers like that? Looking for the diamond shape, which if obliterated might indicate cancer or COPD. That's fine. Looking in the palms for any signs of palmar, uh, in the palmar creases for any signs of anemia, and on the back of the hands for any dilated vessels from CO2 retention. And looking at the fingers for any tar staining from CO2 from smoking. I'm just going to ask you to pop your hands out like this and cock your wrist back. Close your eyes, looking for evidence of a CO2 retention flap. Ideally, I'd do this for 30 seconds. That's fine, you can pop your hands down. Now checking for a pulse. Ideally, I do this for up to a minute. For the purposes of today, I'm going to do it for 15 seconds. And the pulse is 64, the rhythm is regular, and the respiratory rate is 12. Moving up the arm, I would do a blood pressure. Moving on to the neck, I'd like to check for a raised JVP. So with the patient at 45 degrees, you can tilt your head away. Looking for a double pulsation in the neck, which if raised might indicate cardiac failure from emphysema, and that's fine. I'm just going to feel at your neck for any signs of uh, character and volume of the pulse, which if bounding might indicate CO2 retention, and that's fine. Moving on to the face, looking for any signs of pallor, looking in the eyes for any signs of jaundice, anemia or corneal arcus, any evidence of hornus such as meiosis or ptosis, and then looking around the mouth mouth, so any angular colitis. You can open your mouth for me and stick the tongue to your roof of your mouth, looking for any central cyanosis, dehydration, and also having a smell for any purulent sputum, and that's fine. If I can ask you to expose your chest now for me. Now I'll start with a general inspection, looking for any chest drain scars or any other scars that may be present. Looking for any abnormalities such as peptis carinatum, excavatum, flail chest or bowel chest. Looking for any intercostal recession or accessory muscle use, and looking for any asymmetry of movement, none of which are present. So I'm just going to have a start by palpation. So I'm going to have a feel at your neck, sir. So checking for the trachea, checking it's not deviated, and then feeling for the apex beat, which should be in the fifth intercostal space, mid clavicular line, which it is. Either of which, if deviated, you might indicate a tension in your mouth. Now do a chest expansion. So take your breath in, and out, and in, and out, and in. And out, and that's right. Good chest expansion now, actually. Now, I want you to say 99 every time I put my hands on your chest. 99, 99, 99, 99, 99. That's right. Now, I'm going to tap on your chest, listening for any dullness, stony dullness, or hyperresonance. And that's right. I'm just going to have a quick listen. So, I want you to take a deep breath in and out every time I put my stethoscope on. Comparing both sides, listening for any abnormal sounds such as wheeze or crackles or any absent breath sounds. And in the axilla. And can you say 99 for me? 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99. And can you whisper 33 for me? And that's fine. Now I'd like to do the exact same thing on the back. So if you can lean forward for me. I'm going to start with general inspection, looking for any low back to me and eumenectomy cells. And do chest expansion. So can you take a deep breath in? And out. And in. And out. Good chest expansion. So can you say 99 for me? 99, 99, 99, 99. Okay, and I'm just going to tap.
That's fine. I'm going to have a quick listen. So if you take deep breaths in and out through your mouth. Wait one second. And say 99. 99. 99. 99. 99. 99. 99. 99. And whisper 33 again. Preparing both sides for any abnormalities. And that's fine. So I'm just going to feel it in it for any lymph adenopathy. So feeling some mental, some mandibular, preauricular. Deep cervical, supraclavicular, posterior cervical, posterior and occipital. And I'm also just going to feel for any sacral edema. I don't know if that's fine. You can lean back. Just going to check the ankles for any evidence of ankle edema, and that's fine. I'd like to thank the patient. You can cover yourself up. On examination of this patient's respiratory system, everything is normal. However, if I did suspect anything, I would like to do a chest X-ray, ABG, sputum analysis, and a pink flow. Thank you very much.